Hello everyone, you are watching ram24.com and today we are going to disassemble ZTE8050. First of all, we need to remove the SIM card tray. For this, we will use a special eject tool. Insert it into the hole and carefully push the tray out. If the tray doesn't come out smoothly, we can also use tweezers to help pull it out. Next, we need to heat the back cover to about 70 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit. For this, we will use a heating pad, but you can also use a head gun or hair dryer. Take note, on this model, the back cover is additionally glued down in the camera area. That means we also need to heat that section to make separation easier. Now let's move on to removing the back cover. For this, we use a thin plastic film, sliding it into the gap between the back cover and the mid frame and carefully working our way around the edge to slice through that haze. Go slowly around the edge, don't push the film too deep under the cover, since we don't know exactly what components may be underneath. After going all the way around, we will try to peel the back cover off near the camera section. Using the thin plastic film, carefully loosen the adhesive in this spot. The cover here is glued down very firmly, so extra caution is needed. Now we can try opening the back cover. Gently lift it up, open it, and check how the adhesive is laid out on both the cover and the mid frame. As we can see, the back cover is glued all the way around, with particularly strong adhesion near the cameras. Next, we need to remove the screws. For this, we will use a 1.5 mm Phillips screwdriver or a Phillips hash 3 These screws secure the mid frame. Unscrew them carefully and place them on a dedicated surface in an organized layout, since the screws may vary in size. We remove screws from both the top and bottom sections if a screw gets stuck, we can use tweezers to carefully lift it out. Since the adhesive is left on the mid frame, double check all areas to make sure no screws are still in place. Now we move on to removing the mid frame. We start with a thin plastic film, unclipping a few clips near the seam tray slot, then switch to a starter tool. On this model, the mid-frame is also held in place pretty tightly, so we need to be careful. Don't force it, otherwise we could damage the edge of the display. Let's carefully try to open the mid-frame. We can see there is a flex cable for the fingerprint sensor. Leave the mid-frame gently, make sure not to damage the flex cable. Take your time, never use force. We unclip the last clip, open the mid-frame and, as we can see, the fingerprint sensor just falls out. It is not secured to the mid-frame. And set the mid-frame aside. At this point, it is best to cover the camera lenses. For this, we use a protective film. Please note that we stick the film onto the rim around the lenses, not directly on the glass. 
Now let's unscrew the screws in the upper section. These screws may differ from the previous ones, so it is better to keep them separate. Next, using a non-metal tool, we need to remove the cover. Carefully pray it up at the edge, unclip the clips and lift off the cover that protects the motherboard. It may have a little adhesive at the top. And set it aside. Then, using a non-metal tool, disconnect the battery connector. And we can also disconnect the fingerprint sensor flex. Unplug the connector and gently peel off the flex cable, which is attached to the motherboard shield. Now we can remove the cameras. As we can see, they are bonded together with a heat-dissipating foil. And we handle them with care. The main rear camera is also slightly taped to the display frame. Carefully detach the rear cameras. Remember, they are connected by that thermal foil. Don't pull hard on the flex cables to avoid tearing them. And set the cameras aside. Now we can also remove the front camera. Again, peel back the thermal foil. We will use it again during the assembly. And disconnect the connector. It is a good idea to cover the front camera lens as well to keep dust off it. And put the front camera aside. And we can move down to the lower section. Here too we need to unscrew the screws. These may also differ from the previous ones, so keep them organized separately. We use the same 1.5mm Philips or Hash 3.0 screwdriver. After unscrewing, we can remove the cover. This one likely includes the loudspeaker. We find a spot to pray under, lift it up and detach the cover. Yes, indeed, when we flip it over, we see the speaker mounted inside. Next, disconnect the coaxial cable connector. Free the cable and then disconnect the interboard flex connector. Now we can remove the subboard. As always, carefully pray it up, lift it and take it out. A small gasket may come loose underneath. We put it back in place. On the subboard we have the charging port, microphone and headphone jack port. And we set the subboard aside. And here is our usual quick test of the microphone opening. The microphone hole is L-shaped in the display frame. The actual microphone is on the subboard on the reverse side. If we insert something into the hole, we won't damage the mic itself, but liquid could easily get through. Now let's move on to the motherboard. First, we disconnect the coaxial cable connector, then the interboard flex and then the display flex connector. We peel back the thermal foil. It will also be reused during reassembly. After that, check for another screw securing the motherboard. For this, we use the same 1.5 mm Philips or hash 3 screwdriver. And now nothing is in the way. Carefully Pray up the board at the right spot and lift it out. Please note that it may still be held by thermal paste. And that is it, the disassembly is complete. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in our next videos or on our Telegram channel or on our website. Ok guys, now we're done, thank you for watching, if you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, read our articles on our website, take care of yourself and...
Until next time.